we're just <coughs> running this music for you because we have some technical issue connecting with Harut. So once we solve it, we'll come back. So enjoy this music. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so sorry sorry about this. We, you know, sometimes those things happen. And uh, <clears throat> hello, so welcome to gagrule.net. This is Gagrule Live on Facebook. And my name is Wally Sarkisian with Harut Sasunian. And today we'll, the topic is the article he wrote, Pan-Armenian Council of Western USA or Council of Amer Armenian Organization. So, Harud, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, now, my I have first question I want to ask you about this uh, organization, that 20, 20 Armenian organization, including those churches. Now, they want 300. If you have 300 member, then you could join this group. But most of those people are member in church and in those political group. How do they figure out these things? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. They have, it's not just the church or the political groups. But every member organization has to have minimum of 300 members. So all, yeah, but, all 20 of them have to have each at least 300 members. Otherwise, they don't qualify to join I know, them. But, but how do they figure out that some of those are member also in the church? Oh, it doesn't matter, but each organization should have its own membership. Oh, okay. You can right. be a member in a number of places, I guess, but uh, it doesn't matter. You have to have a membership. Your organization has to have 300 members. Okay. They can be members elsewhere. It doesn't matter. And so uh, so right now is uh, basically the Glendale and Burbank and La Crescenta, this area's people. So is there organization from, say, uh, um, Arizona, Nevada, uh, Seattle areas, or is this is just uh, Glendale and surrounding area? No, no, this is a uh, council for Western United States, all of the Western United States. Okay. All the way to Mississippi, I guess. But uh, looking at the 20 names, I don't see anybody from any other state. Uh, I guess because none of the uh, organizations in other states have three, 300 members or more. Uh, this is the largest community, so they're all from here. But some of them, like political parties or churches, have branches in other states. Gomides, committees or churches, individual churches that are part of the prelacy or the diocese of Western United States. So what is your take on this? Well, as I said in my article, uh, anytime Armenians join hands and speak with one voice, it's very positive. So I, I, I welcome it. I, you know, I have a series of questions myself, and uh, I wrote in my column. But uh, it's a very positive thing. There's nothing negative about Armenians coming together to be a stronger uh, force in, in, in the community, both Western U.S. and uh, worldwide, so we can help the community better, we can help Armenia and Artsakh better. So uh, I, I have no uh, objection to what they're trying to do. So I got uh, quite a bit of stuff, you know, but you know, Armenian always is ready to criticize no matter what you do. Is like someone was writing to me saying, Is this a church takeover over the politics? Um, or, or this is just everyone going to be independently making decisions? Well, uh, they, they announced in their declaration that the, uh, the, the council's collective uh, uh, opinions are not imposed on any of its member organizations, which means that they all have to agree on doing something together before they do it. Uh, so just because the council decides something, it doesn't mean that each of the member organizations will have to follow that course. So so the church is not impose, imposing anything, the political party is not imposing. Each group is independent, 
they can uh, uh, follow the direction of the majority or, and join them, or they say, no, uh, this isn't something we want we want to be part of. Are they going to have like board members? Somebody have to make decisions? Well, I think I think what I heard is uh, each each of the twenty organizations. Well, right now it's twenty. There could be more later on, but right now the twenty. Each of them will be represented in their meetings by two delegates. So, so the there'll be uh, if, if there's two from each of the twenty, that's forty people. And that's it. There, there's no chairman. There's no board. That's it. They're, they're the body that makes decisions for the whole group. So if I call, there is something I want to find out. Who do I talk to? Well, I, I think I think they they said in an interview that I watched. Uh, they're gonna have a website, and on the website they're gonna be a way of sending emails and ask questions or wh whatever they did. People want to ask, they can ask by c contacting the website. I don't know if they're going to have an office and phone. Maybe that's in the future. I don't know. But right now, I haven't heard anything about an office and a phone. There's no leadership as such. They're all equal members. All 20 of them are equal members. And nobody has a veto over decisions. And nobody will force will force anybody to do something that, that the others don't like. So it's it's this ad hoc committee of 20 of them, and whenever something important happens, they will get together, discuss, and see if they all agree to take a, a common position. And if somebody has a question, they can write an email to them when, you know, they're supposed to have a website shortly. They don't have it yet now, but they just got organized a few days ago. So this is Western United States. What happened to Eastern United States? Yeah, there's no such thing in the Eastern United States. This is just Western United States. Uh, there's something similar in, in France for many, many years. I don't know when they started, but maybe maybe 20 years ago. Uh, it's the uh, uh, collective of uh, Armenian organizations of France. It's called CCAF. And uh, it's very similar to this. They... Uh, but as far as I know, they don't have like so many organizations together. They have few of the major organizations, uh, but it's similar concept. Uh, but East Coast, uh, they haven't uh, uh, contacted, they haven't talked, they haven't discussed, or they haven't decided what to do on the East Coast. So this is going to be one in Eastern, Western, then Eastern, and then maybe Canada does its own, and Australia does its own. So we're still we're still diaspora will be divided. Well, I don't know if any of the others will do anything like, like this, but right now, the only one that exists is uh, the old one from France, which is unrelated to this, and this one in Western United States. I don't know if uh, Eastern US will follow suit to Canada, Argentina, Lebanon, I don't know. I'm sure those guys must discuss this stuff, you know. Uh, well, which guys? The ones uh, here? No, those 20 organization. Well, the, the, the 20 can only discuss uh, for themselves in Western U.S. Uh, they cannot discuss anything having to do with other communities because this is the community they live in. See, so this is their uh, their decision for their own community. Not they they have no say in what happens in Argentina. So you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good a good idea. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I have questions which I wrote in my column, the questions I have uh, to the group. But uh, in general, uh, in principle, Armenians coming together is a good idea. Nobody can say that Armenians coming together is a bad idea. They can do it this way or that way. We can have suggestions. We can have improvements. But... It's it's not a uh, wrong thing or bad thing to do. But then it's not that same <clears throat> same organization when they united uh, Armenian genocide and stuff like that, or they just. That, that's one of the questions I have because on the centennial of the Armenian <laughs> genocide, we had a committee, <laughs> uh, twenty one organizations, which were roughly similar to what what these people are doing now, the council, and that. 
United uh, or the Armenian Genocide Commemorative Committee uh, started in 2013 to get ready for the centennial and lasted till 2015. I was one of the co-chairmen of the 100th anniversary committee. And I, and I told everybody, and I wrote about it in, in my articles, that uh, this is organized during the centennial, but they should not disband it after the centennial is over, because there will always be community issues, there'll be issues in other communities. It's always good to keep the, the coalition together, but uh, who am I to tell anybody what to do? So they disbanded when the centennial was over, and uh, and the other thing which I mentioned in my article, uh, the government of Armenia, the the state centennial committee, under the leadership of the government in 2015 September 26, they had a meeting and they invited to the meeting all 40 chapters of the genocide committee from 40 countries, and I was there at that meeting in Yerevan. And they passed a resolution unanimously saying that uh, let's form a, a United Armenian Council and, uh, and so that we stay united and we don't uh, disband the centennial. And uh, they said fine and they, they formed the organizing committee uh, composed of I think 12 people. Uh, some from the uh, Armenian government leaders and some from the heads of uh, diaspora Armenian organizations, and they said, "Okay, uh, you guys start planning this this Armenian council, uh, which will be a worldwide council." And some suggested, "Well, have local councils, like you were saying earlier, in different countries, so that we can all coordinate when something happens worldwide, so we're not separate groups in each place." And uh, they said that's what they planned, and that was in 2015, September 26. After that, uh, they were supposed to get together in 2017 and agree on policies and issues, which they never did. It was forgotten. In 2018, the revolution happened in uh, May, and uh, the new government uh, has not spoken anything specific about any kind of uh, coalition of Armenian organizations. But Pashinyan, once in a while, has said that we need something that the United Diaspora, United Armenia with Diaspora, uh, I don't know how, but so it, it's, it's the ideas, they have a basic uh, ideas, but it's not developed yet to a concrete uh, uh, solution. So those are, none of them are elected. They're, they're basically volunteer members, like you're a member of Tashnak, so you're a member number. So it's not, they're not elected by people. No, people do not elect them. They're elected by their own members of their own organization. And uh, so they represent their organization only. They don't re represent the community at large. I see. What happened to your idea? Well, I'm uh, working on it. We, we finished the bylaws and principles and registered as a nonprofit. And uh, we're now uh, preparing the presentation. And when we're ready, we'll, we'll have a public event and uh, announce it to the community and the world. Uh, uh, the one I'm working on with, with my team is not only for a, a particular community. It's a worldwide, diaspora-wide concept. So it applies to everywhere outside of Armenia and Artsakh, because Armenia and Artsakh already have their own uh, governments, and we don't want to go in and establish a another government inside the government. No, so. no but, but I think, I, 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 honestly, your idea is much better because people would vote, um, then uh, you'll have a leadership, somebody could speak on behalf of all Armenian in diaspora, instead of, I don't know, this is maybe would work for local stuff, but um, if everyone, uh, east, west, north, south, try to do their own stuff, I, I see it still is united to be divided, you know. Um, but uh, I really rather have something that you're working on, we just don't know yet, but uh, that 
every Armenian will be able to vote and to have so nobody would complain. Uh, so that's that's better idea, I think. But we'll see. Well, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, so we'll 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 have a, a separate interview when when the time comes. It's, uh, it's probably in a couple of months. And uh, but I don't want to I don't want one group fighting against another group. Uh, there's a room for all of them to work because they're different. They're not the same thing. This is a co coalition of organizations, whereas mine is uh, a democratic election. It's uh, every Armenian can participate in it. It's the public at large in it, not not the organizations. So when? Probably a couple couple of months. Uh, I'm, you I'm, keep I'm, telling me a couple of months. I've been waiting. <laughs> I know, but we want to be make sure that we're ready. We don't want to just come out and with half baked ideas, and, and then uh, the people uh, say it, uh, no good. But we want to be make sure that we're ready when when we when we make it public. Well, if you if you have nonprofit already registered and you have your members and and so you are close. Yeah, we're we're almost there. Rich. How many of you are in this playing this game? Well, I, this is just an ad hoc organizing committee, and we're not the leaders of anything. We're just helping organize it and launch it, and then later on there'll be uh, elections that will uh, people will decide who should be the leaders. Of, of this idea, so it's, it's, so I'm not the leader of anything. Uh, I'm the chairman of the nonprofit, but that's just to organize and launch the concept. But the idea of voting, like say, you still has to be some kind of like political group, or you know, like I know if this is more complicated. If some new ideas always are gonna evolve and gonna be changed and improved, but uh, you guys must have some ideas. Okay, so you're going to put in there 10 people and you're going to say vote for those 10 people or it's going to be like every region will, you know, put somebody in there You vote like, you know, in American election or uh, similar things. Like uh, say what? some people from Argentina, they'll, they'll have three people from Argentina, so three, four from uh, Australia. Is that how it's going to yes. work? That's how it is. Uh, we're not going to tell anybody vote for the 10 people now. Those 10 people are just helping to launch the project. Then they'll be out. Then the pe people will, in each community around the world, will vote for their own local delegates. The, uh, nobody from Argentina is going to vote for any one of us sitting here. So it's going to be their own local delegates in each country and its region. And there'll be a, something like uh, we, we're calling it now diaspora Armenian parliament. So okay. and, and it's very similar to the U.S. Congress where the, the people cast a vote, one man, one vote or one woman, one vote. And uh, everybody is equal. Anybody who lives in the diaspora has an equal vote. There's no there's no it's uh, I'm the leader. You're the leader. There's no nobody makes themselves a leader. The people by majority vote decide decide who's their representative, just like congressman is elected by the majority vote. Congressman doesn't declare himself to be congressman. So also it's going to have somebody like a president or chairman of that organization. They will elect within that organization, right? Like Switzerland, they, uh, they have a good system. They vote for their member of parliament and member of parliament uh, decide rotating uh, member like every two years they'll have different that's why nobody knows who is the prime minister of switzerland is some similar things yeah well it's uh, similar to the u.s congress the congress has a uh, speaker of the house and they have the senate majority leader which uh, members of congress elect so it'll be the same thing uh, when the parliament uh, exists uh, down the line we have a little more uh, to go for the parliament to be elected and exist then they will elect their own chairman of the parliament. They'll uh, form committees of the parliament, committee chairs and committee vice chairs, just like Congress. So very, very similar. Now, so, we're not inventing anything new. It's really new for the Armenian community in diaspora, but, but not, not new in, in a democratic uh, world. It's a, this is democracy at work. That's a good idea. I think I, 
that one I, I think most people are gonna like it as long as you guys did your work pretty good because no matter what you do people all record you have no idea how many messages I got about this pan-armenian and some saying you know the church is extending their dirty hand into this and oh man I don't even get into those messages but but if something like what you're working on I think it's it's long due uh, something happened like that now you know I give you credit for for working and coming out with that because because I remember like I think I even contacted you too probably I don't remember when there was this things going in uh, in Armenia the revolution and everybody I was calling everyone was silent nobody would say something or you know give what's gonna happen or and so but times like this where you have a parliament you could contact someone they know they could contact the, what is going on in Armenia or Artsakh you know they could mobilize the people so it's really really about time Armenians have something like that and I'm sure it's going to be pretty successful well well we hope so but look, yeah, like you said uh, every Armenian is a critic and uh, everybody <laughs> every everybody is a chief but you know, the, we have nothing personal to gain from this. Well, I'm not looking for uh, income or a position or to be elected anything. It's just uh, helping launch it. Uh, I, I wrote an article 10 years ago uh, giving this concept. And for uh, and then um, a few months after the article, uh, the <laughs> U.S. Institute of Armenian Studies did a all-day conference. We invited... Uh, experts from all over the world to come and give their opinion and analysis about this concept and everybody was in favor there were 600 people in the hall uh, sat there from morning till evening and then at the end we asked uh, what is your opinion about this idea and I think about 95 percent uh, raised their hands very few people uh, had questions but m most of them said yes so we will we'll try I mean uh, it's very difficult uh, all things that are tried for the first time are difficult to accomplish and uh, it's uh, if it was easy it would have been done a long time ago yes it hasn't been done no because I, I, I think it's a good idea and especially if you guys implement not like u.s congress is very complicated but something like switzerland that you member of parliament you like and those chairs would be rotating so you don't have dictatorship so, you know, every two years they would elect different members from a different region. Maybe one, one time will be someone from Argentina, next time with Australia, next time from U.S. So some kind of rotating and, and, and then they have this, uh, what do you call parliament system. It's, I think will work and it's going to have its difficulties, but it's going to work. Well, in order to uh, preserve the democratic principles, uh, I don't want to sit now and decide every little decision that will be decided by the parliament uh, leadership and parliament members. It's up to them to decide. If I decide everything myself, then we don't really need a parliament. No, so, but we're talking about the structure. Let, we're talking yeah, let, about the structure. Well, we have a rough structure, but, yes. but, but the little details, I, will, I leave it to the the parliament members and the leadership to decide rotating uh, which committee doing this doing that the uh, limitations yeah, sure. but there's all sorts of details i mean it's it's very difficult thing to do wow. but uh, but I'm, i must also say that uh, the uh, just because i have this idea it doesn't mean that currently working organizations or uh, whoever they are they will all continue their work of course each one has their own, you know, cultural, uh, sports, uh, religious, political, humanitarian, whatever, artistic. They will continue their work. This doesn't replace them. This is just... No, this is, is going to be a political body. Yeah, well, it's, it's not just political. It also uh, deals with all issues that we have in the diaspora and also coordinate with Armenia and uh, Artsakh. It also, like you said, uh, when Armenia wants to know what is the opinion of diaspora right now, uh, President of Armenia or Prime Minister cannot call 7 million Armenians in diaspora ask for their opinion. Yeah. There will be a, a elected body that can speak for the people and elected by the people. 
and then they contact the parliament and the parliament members will tell them what they think about well, whatever the issue is. Yeah, it's about time. I think this has been, should have been a long time done, but, but thank you for uh, taking your time and organizing and, and you, are, you are one of Armenian top intellectual. If you can't do it, nobody else can do it. Yeah. I, uh, we, we all need to do it. This isn't one man's job. Or, no, no, but somebody has to start with the idea. But everybody has to uh, want to do this. Uh, no matter how much I want it or organize, it's not going to go anywhere. Every Armenian has to believe in it and be participate in it, be a member in it, work for it and encourage it uh, because it's not a one man's job. As long as it's democratically done, it will succeed. Well, that's the that, that's a principle that we cannot violate. Right. That, that's a given. Right. Democracy is a absolute must. Yeah. So if it's democratic done and the structure is important, like, you know, uh, even the United States, there was like, what, uh, five, six people decided the Congress and all that, you know, they got together and wrote this constitution stuff. So it's basically you guys have to come up with really solid structure. And so that down the road, if they want to amend it or add to it, remove it, they could do it. But right. you have to present something that the structure is not, it's flawless, like there's not any problem in it, you know, so. No, no, we are, we are, but in the future, they can, just like in the United States, yes. there are constitutional amendments, then they, over the time, they refine things, they change things, and different committees they, they created in Congress. So it's, it's a natural uh, process. Yes, and I'm really happy with it, and I just can't wait when that red flag you're gonna, uh, raise and say here it is you know and i hope when you do it will be a press conference not announcing something you so so we there, there will be a press conference no okay well you guys could decide we have no control over it um it, it's really it's really about time i really think that's good and uh, i'm sure you're you've been working on this for a long time now uh I, I don't know, probably a year or something, you know. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> the idea, <clears throat> I started with the idea 10 years ago, 2010, I think it was. And then uh, and then uh, I formed this ad hoc committee and very uh, good, decent, uh, uh, good Armenians and caring people. There's about a dozen of us. We've been meeting uh, every Saturday for four hours and sometimes during the week for the last uh, two, three years uh, going through and our ideas are developing uh, and where we started now, you know, it's quite a bit different now because we learn from each other. We uh, we exchange our ideas and uh, we argue with each other, but, you know, with the best of intention, they're all good people. And uh, so that when we finish, we present the best we have. And if the best is not good enough, then, then let somebody else do it. Well, you know, you guys put all this time doing it. I'm quite confident that you guys have some you know, worked on, you know, but uh, it will work. Uh, you know, it's, it's about, I think everybody's hungry for that. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there is, there is no, there is no, there is eight, there is three times more Armenian diaspora than in Armenia, but we have no, a shepherd, you know, we have lots of sheep, but no shepherds, you know. Right. So, well, I don't want to call the people sheep. But well, I mean, you know, we're followers, you know, we, everybody's looking for a leadership in everything, you know. Well, I, the way I put it, I say we're all equal Armenians. There's no. That's all right. So you always use good politically yeah, correct words, but that's there's fine. There's no be be better and worse Armenians. We're all equal. <laughs> okay. All right. So what well, we can't wait to, to come. I want to ask you a little bit about Pashinyan. Okay. You know, like he's he's a good guy. He did good job, and this revolution was pretty good. But I could see there is just one Pashinyan. He has no um, surrogate to go fight for him. Everything that he is taking the fire extinguisher and going around putting like. There is a problem, say, in this gold, mount, gold mountain, and there is problem with this 
Istanbul Convention. I don't. He's the one going fighting all these fires. He just does not have his people to go fight for him. You know, it's just he's putting everything in his so shoulder. What do you think? Well, I, I think you're right uh, because he's the leader of the protest movement and he started it and he's been protesting for years uh, as a uh, uh, opposition but now he's in charge so everybody looks up to him uh, in Armenia and outside Armenia to, to be the leader and the other thing I would like to add is that what you're saying is very correct because recent days when there are all these uh, debates about the gold mine in Armenia and a lot of people are very upset over it and even Pashinyan himself he made an uh, announcement saying uh, how come the members of my party in uh, my members of my in the parliament my uh, supporters they're all hiding and leaving me alone uh, to to fight by myself because that the, 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 the his his partners see that the, the people are against it so they're reluctant to speak up speak up and uh, and saying they agree with the people because if they agree with the people they're going to be against Pashinyan so they're just keeping quiet uh, so Pashinyan is shouldering all the burden of this uh, yeah. battle battle uh, on the uh, gold mine uh, the other more serious issue is uh, it's not good for Armenia to just have one leader who uh, does not seem to have somebody else who can follow him for the time being. Because if God forbid something happens to that leader, then we're completely left like a uh, uh, chicken without a head, you know. And uh, so it, 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 it'll, it, it's it's going to take time uh, to develop others uh, uh, I know it has to be from his group and his affiliation, that, that's fine. And that's the way it is in o other countries also. But uh, you always need to ba need backup. Yeah, but you know, like other other parties, you know, even, uh, even the Republicans, they brought in people from outside, you know, they, they had Minister of Economy was from Tashnag and other and other, but Pashinyan is just kept his active group, and he didn't bring people from. Like for example, Rafi Ovanesian. I mean, he would have been perfect times like this. Go there and fight for him. You know, he's a good speaker. He could talk good. You know, but he just he's just putting everything on his shoulder. It's very very difficult. Yeah, like basically, he's micromanaging it. And it's, I don't know, this is, I think, what is his problem is, is that he's sincere, he's honest, he's trying to do things. But, you know, in, in this big government, you just cannot do it yourself. I don't care how smart you are. Well, the, the, there were ministers from other parties, uh, but uh, like Prosperous Armenia and uh, ARF and others, but then, then at some point when they disagreed, he dismissed all of them. Yes. So now it's all uh, Pashinyan's party ministers. And uh, he still, even though he announced a year ago that he will uh, put to work people from different backgrounds, different political parties, uh, as long as they're experienced and know what they're doing. But uh, that's not what happened. He, it's all from, from his side. Which is, again, it may not be good, but that's normal. Like uh, uh, Trump becomes president, he puts the people he knows and the people he likes. He doesn't bring in Democrats or uh, other people. Uh, he's surrounded by people he knows. Every president brings people that are close to him. They support him. They, uh, they trust him. Uh, and they don't bring just strangers uh, in. So, that, But Armenia is a small country with many, many problems. We need the help of every Armenian, no matter who they are, what side they're on. As well, long that's as that's they... the reason we're talking about, because we see those weaknesses, those problems. And so that's why we're discussing. We're just hopefully Pashina or somebody is watching. And uh, because I know when he was doing revolution, every time I was something writing, they even I had like two phone numbers, you know, like. But now somehow uh, 
he does it himself. He just play like journalist. He play uh, other things like he need to get some surrogate, go do his work, you know, fight out there for him and not just uh, he does it, you know, he just doesn't work. He could get sick one day. What are you going to do? You know? Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's a problem. Right. Yes, yes. I, agree. I agree. I agree. Because when I was in Armenia, I interviewed th uh, three um, high ranking of uh, member of parliament, different parties. That was their concern. In fact, one one of them, I don't want to name it because we all have the video. He's, he said, if Pashinyan, because I asked him to grade Pashinyan, and he said, if Pashinyan have stayed like something, I don't know, in Armenian, they say that, but it, it's like uh, revolutionary council, head of revolutionary council, and let somebody be a prime minister. So if the prime minister is not doing a good job, he could fire him, bring somebody else. But right now, who is going to fire? Fire himself, you know? And so there's a lot of good good people in there that were concerned about these things. So I hope, like, he would start changing. And, like, even his friend, uh, uh, Sir Tankian, you know, is against him about this gold mine, you know? And so it's people, you know, you know how in politics, people always behind you and then suddenly they just back off, you know? Well, I mean, that's something we uh, thought about from day one of the uh, change of government or revolution, uh, that people are enthusiastic, they uh, expect expect overnight changes, and uh, they're very anxious, they're impatient, they're suffering, there's been suffering for 30 years under uh, bad leadership, and when the new guy comes and uh, people get their hopes high, they expect a lot of changes right away. And if it doesn't happen, they get disappointed. So yeah. the important thing is people not to be disappointed. Give him some room, let him, give him time. And let's see how over time he learns and gets experience. And, you know, he's meeting various leaders in different countries. Uh, he's traveling uh, frequently to Europe. Uh, you know, he's coming to Los Angeles in September. Uh, he's going to UN in New York. Uh, he, he goes to European Parliament in Brussels and goes to Moscow. He went to China, went to Iran. So uh, all these are building experiences for him. And uh, so we, we, we all want him to succeed because we all are counting on him. And, uh, and we also want, don't want to disappoint the people because in the past, people who got disappointed and left the country. And that's so why we have so many Armenians in, in LA and in Moscow and other Europe. But so we want to, for them to succeed so people stay in Armenia, build Armenia. Our diaspora comes and invests in Armenia, support the government. Uh, so so, so it's, it's not just Pashinyan, it's for the good of the homeland that we all need, need, need to support it. I don't think I don't think anybody wants this government to fail because if fail would be a disaster. Right. You know, like, uh, so everybody wants. That's why people like me and you and other, when we talk, we write. And because we really want to point out uh, the mistakes or things that we could see, hopefully he get the message and change it and do something different. Because this government has to succeed whether you like it or not. It's not benefit to anybody. Uh, and... Uh, Let's hope uh, they'll do something good, and uh, and I hope uh, your projects come soon. I can't wait, uh, you know. And uh, if you have to say anything, please say it, and uh, we'll just hang up. And until next next time, yeah. No, I have uh, nothing else to add. I think we had a good conversation. Hopefully, it was interesting to people. Yeah, but we'll try it. We're doing it every every Wednesday night after your article and uh, we throw in a little bit here and there and uh, basically uh, it's all to do with Armenian affairs whether in Armenia or diaspora right and uh, we all are volunteers nobody pay us and I don't know if they pay you but nobody pay me <laughs> I want people to pay you something but nobody does well we're all we're all working for the sake of the homeland yeah
Okay, okay. well, uh, Arut, thank, thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. You come, and uh, I hope people who listen to this and uh, they learn something. And uh, so we'll we'll watch this new organization. Uh, I there was a couple of people. One of them were supposed to come and talk about it. We're still waiting. Hopefully, that shows give us some more detail, and and we'll go from there. And uh, thank you for watching, and thank you, Harut, and we'll see you in next episode. Thank you very much. Good night.